Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about using this material to 3D print this that can fly like this. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check out our website for this model and others, as well as printing configurations for different materials. The Pika is a 3D printed B tail slope glider with a wingspan of 49 inches. This will be a three servo build, two wing servos, and one tail servo. This is a similar size and design to the Destiny and Mini Destiny, but about halfway in between. So it can use low cost mini servos in an easy layout similar to a mini blade. I have done other build and fly videos on the Pika, but never a lightweight one until now. Using the foaming lightweight PLA, the Pika ready to fly weight is around 13 ounces which is almost half the ready to fly weight of the glass molded Destiny. With only three servos, the Pika is lighter weight, easier to build, and easier to program in plenty of flaps to slow down. In this version, I made it a two piece wing and a removable tail, which makes it easier to pack in a hiking day pack, as well as replacing parts that get damaged. All right, let's build one. My current printer of choice is the Bamboo Lab X1C, but just about any printer can print the foaming lightweight PLA. The print settings are key to get any printer to print these parts with this material, and best results are one part at a time. Check out my video guide on setting up Orca Slicer with any printer for printing this lightweight foaming PLA. Link in the tab in the upper right corner, link in the description, and the video is on my channel, so please subscribe. Check out our other videos for more Orca Slicer tips and tricks for printing airplanes. Start with the Sorecraft test part and try out these settings. Once you're happy, you're ready to print the rest of the plane. For the Pika, there are detailed instructions for the fuselage and separate instructions for the wing, detailing the parts to print, additional parts needed, and how to put them all together. In Orca Slicer, you can import multiple parts, turn parts on and off, set up the print bed, slice, and send each part individually. You can set up the whole plane in one project on multiple build plates, even though you're printing one part at a time, it makes it easy to keep track of everything. Switch between materials almost seamlessly or a second printer of any type if set up. I'm printing all of these parts out of PETG. The printer is now a tool spitting out whatever airplane parts you want. These are the printed parts and the carbon supports for the wing. Same for the fuselage and tail. This type of carbon is called protruded carbon, and these are the sizes and lengths for the wing, the fuselage, and I used one for the elevator pushrod sheath. And these are listed in the description below. It's not too hard to find if you do a Google search for protruded carbon that's one meter long. There is some on Amazon, but it tends to be very expensive. Aloft Hobbies is a good source for carbon, as well as servos and other parts. They even have a page for the Pika to build a kit. And free shipping if you order over $80. Another source I like to use is Windcatcher RC. They have all the carbon and servos too, in case the other site is out of stock. They do bulk discount on most of their carbon. Carbon is about $15 to $20 per plane. 
with shipping being about 15 bucks no matter how much you get. For this build, I decided to splurge a little, and I got this 3K carbon tube to try out. Lighter than the rod, but not much different from the standard protruded tube. It seems to handle crashes a little bit better without splitting. I have reused this one several times, and it looks cool too. Because most of the 1x4 strip will be cut down, you can substitute 5 pieces of 1x4x500 if the 1 meter material is sold out. It will work out the same because of the 2 piece wing. I like to add color before I assemble and flat spray paint seems to work the best for this foaming material. I mask the edges and paint the bottoms black and then turn them over and paint the tops orange. Good visibility. And if you print the tips and the tail fins first, then you can do this while the rest is printing. I'm also going to save some weight by using plastic hardware instead of metal hardware. Nylon screws are easily available at Ace Hardware and a matching tap to thread the nuts. M5 metric hardware also works. Still going to use my standard hardware of easy connectors for the ailerons, a clevis for the single servo V-tail elevator, 032 and 047 music wire push rods, three cheap 9 gram servos, and a couple servo extensions. Sure, you can buy all this stuff on Amazon, or you can go down to your local hobby shop and check out what they have and they are a great resource to support. I found these plastic clevises that are a hair lighter than the metal ones I usually use and might be worth trying to save adding a little bit of balance weight. Going to use about a half ounce of thin CA for most of the build, a little five minute epoxy for a push rod holder, and a thin layer of silicone caulking for the hinges. You also need radio gear. I'm using the FR Sky Tyrannus X9 light transmitter, an FR Sky 6 channel receiver, and a AAA square battery pack, which are hard to find built, so just make one. In addition to the tap, I use many other standard tools and aids to build these planes. Here are some Sorecraft specific tools that can be very helpful. A 4 inch file set for cleaning up small carbon channels. Five and a half inch file set for the hinge lines. And this round file or chainsaw file, this one is a 730 seconds. Very useful. Links for these tools are in the description below. With all this stuff collected, we're ready to build. Check out part two, where I do a step-by-step -step assembly of this lightweight pica. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.